Item number, SCP-156, Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-156 is to be kept in Refrigerated Storage Unit 19C, except when removed for experimentation. Subjects infected by SCP-156 are to be restrained and monitored for their own safety. From September 21st to March 21st, infected subjects should be kept within a secure storage unit, unless the experiment's parameters indicate otherwise. Both storage facilities should be monitored by security camera. The termination and autopsy of D-Class personnel assigned to SCP-156 should be delayed until after March 21st. No personnel are permitted to consume SCP-156, except D-Class personnel, unless approved by a Level 3 staff member. Description SCP-156 is a group of exactly 181 pomegranate arrows. The number of instances of SCP-156 is constant. When one is ingested or destroyed, it is replaced instantaneously with a new one, among the largest group of contiguous instances. Otherwise, the instances can be moved around freely. After leaving the group, i.e. after an instance is touching no other instance, the instance will spoil normally after which a new instance will appear. When all instances are destroyed simultaneously, all 181 instances reappear randomly at the location of one of the destroyed arrows. Attempts to measure the time between destruction of one instance and the appearance of a new one using high-speed cameras have so far failed. If SCP-156 is ingested between March 21st and September 20th, subjects display no signs of infection until noon of September 21st when all vital processes abruptly cease. A similar effect is observed immediately when SCP-156 is ingested after September 21st. Despite being technically dead, post-mortem examinations of subjects have been unable to discover a cause of death. Subjects appear to have been in perfect health, aside from any pre-existing conditions. While dead, subjects do not show any signs of decomposition though the bodies of many subjects begin displaying bruising and scarring consistent with torture. While the majority of subjects suffer these wounds, not all do, and no reliable formula has been discovered to predict which subjects will be affected. Infected subjects remain in this dormant state until noon of March 21st, when life processes restart. Subjects remember little of the intervening time period. While most subjects are entirely unaware that any time has passed since their apparent death, some claim to recall a pale white male face and a wilting pomegranate tree. Subjects continue to die and reanimate annually on September and March 21st respectively, until killed by another cause. Reanimation only occurs from deaths caused by ingesting SCP-156. After undergoing a single death reanimation cycle, subjects begin displaying high levels of distress and paranoia as time approaches September 21st even if they have not been made aware of the death reanimation cycle. Furthermore, subjects will take extreme lengths to avoid taking any sort of risk or danger to their person, even if they had displayed risk-taking behaviors prior to ingesting SCP-156. Over the course of multiple death reanimation cycles, these psychological symptoms become more pronounced. At the same time, physical symptoms during the dormant period increase in intensity for the subjects suffering from them. Eventually, physical wounds on subjects will begin to emulate burns and puncture wounds. Many subjects gain a phobia of dogs and dead plants after three to five reanimations. After several deaths caused by SCP-156, the ocular tissue undergrows necrosis in many subjects. This tissue does not reanimate with the rest of the body. Often, after ten or more reanimations, reanimation of bodily processes will occur but the subject will fail to regain consciousness, entering a comatose state. Death and reanimation continues annually, even after subjects have reached this stage. SCP-156 came to the attention of the Foundation after an incident in Greece. After several people died on September 21st, 19... without apparent cause. The Foundation became involved after locals reported the return of several of the dead who had been interred in above-ground vaults the following spring. After questioning these subjects, all reported having attended a party at the house of one A.K., 
who had been buried and was found asphyxiated in her coffin. SCP-156 was discovered within the house, fresh, despite the intervening six months since the incident. Testing commenced on D-Class personnel. D-E-15624, the first test subject, died in September and was autopsied. No cause of death could be found. Subject was left under monitoring and storage. In March of the same year, subject began to show brain activity and subject's heart began beating despite the body having taken significant damage during the autopsy. D-E-15624 expired shortly thereafter without regaining consciousness. Errol's given SCP status and longer-term testing was ordered. Item Number SCP-207 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-207 is to be stored in a waterproofed locking metal container, measuring 1 meter by 0.5 meters by 0.5 meters. The key is to be issued to the current head researcher of Site's biocontainment area. SCP-207 is to be retained inside this area at all times, and all personnel entering the area should be checked for any food or drink items, in addition to any other searches required. Any staff seen ingesting SCP-2071 are to be retained for future study, with all Foundation clearance levels removed. All vending machines in Site are to only dispense clear carbonated beverages. Any variation from transparent is to be investigated immediately. Description SCP-207 refers to a crate containing 24 Coca-Cola brand cola drinks. The bottles are designated SCP-207-A to X. SCP-207-B is currently the active bottle for testing, and no other bottles are to be opened without authorization from two Level 4 researchers. All bottles have been clearly labeled to aid identification. The liquid held inside these has been confirmed to be identical across all of SCP-207 and should not be ingested outside of supervised testing. The liquid has been classified as SCP-2071 and is to be treated as a Class II chemical hazard. SCP-2071 does not appear to alter with age. However, the active testing bottle should have its protective cover kept on the outside of removing liquid for testing. Mass spectroscopy and chemical tests have shown higher than usual concentrations of caffeine and sugars, both natural and artificial, along with data expunged. The practical effect of this is when a subject drinks SCP-2071, they will effectively no longer require sleep or rest, nor attempt to sleep or rest. This effect is not lessened by any soporific or medication yet tested on test subjects. However, only a quantity larger than 5 milliliters will cause this effect. The reason for this lower boundary existing has not yet been found although it is hypothesized by Dr. C that data expunged. As such, unless authorized by two Level 3 researchers, only 5 milliliters of SCP-2071 is to be used for testing. Amounts higher than this have shown no difference in effect, with the exception of the subject SCP-207 was recovered from. In addition to removing the need for rest, SCP-2071 also causes an increase in motor, reaction, and psychological functions. The increase is linear in progression, with an estimated 50% increase, measured by standard medical protocols, plus or minus 5%, every 6 hours. The practical application of ingestion is that the subject is able to think, react, and move faster than others who have not ingested SCP-2071. Mental proficiencies show the IQ of the subject to rise in line with other increases. However, SCP-2071 does not alter the body of affected subjects. Physiology remains unchanged, and as such, can rarely support the increase in activity. No subjects have lasted longer than 48 hours during testing, with the cause of death varying from massive internal organ failure to exsanguination due to major artery ruptures. Subjects also begin to show stress after roughly 24 hours, usually making each movement extremely carefully in order to avoid accidents. Tests SCP-207-Alpha and Rho have shown that after approximately 24 hours, the increases caused by SCP-207-1 mean subjects can easily underestimate their speed. Most specifically, 
In test subject SCP-207 row, the subject was able to escape the containment area despite a 5-meter wall. However, this caused the test subject's internal bone structure data expunged. Addendum SCP-207 was recovered from college after reports of a student moving from failing grades in all areas, including physical sports, to top percentile marks and record-breaking performances in physical areas. Agent embedded in the local police force, brought said student in for interview. Subject revealed the existence of SCP-207 during the interview. However, escape attempt while Class A amnestics were being administered resulted in the subject violently data expunged. Cause of death, organ failure due to massive internal hemorrhage. As SCP-207-A was empty on recovery, it is believed ingesting a full bottle data expunged. SCP-207 recovered from subject's home. SCP-207-A already empty. Subject reported to local police force as missing person. No further cause for surveillance of college required at this time. Item number SCP-241 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-241 is to be kept at Site-19 using standard operating procedures for containing safe class book and manuscript type SCPs, with the following additional conditions. SCP-241 must be kept open on a flat surface, with restraints across opposing pages of the open book to keep it from closing accidentally. Containment devices must be checked at least once a week for structural integrity. Any anomalies must be reported immediately to Site Command. Access to SCP-241 is restricted. Any and all usage of SCP-241 must be logged. SCP-241 must be transported in an authorized book stand, such that it cannot accidentally be closed in transit. In the event that SCP-241 is opened outside of a testing environment, the last person to have touched it must report to the nearest infirmary, and a D-Class personnel must close and reopen SCP-241. Description SCP-241 appears as a normal book. 33 cm by 23 cm by 3.5 cm, entitled Good Home Cooking. The cover of SCP-241 is a red and white checkerboard pattern with the title in simple black letters on the front and spine. When open, SCP-241 contains 99 recipes, sorted into typical sections of a cookbook. Many of these recipes include a picture of the dish that is invariably appetizing and a small percentage will call for rare or exotic ingredients. Whenever SCP-241 is opened by a subject, known as the target, different from the one who last opened it, i.e. the previous target, the recipes contained in the book change. Preliminary investigations concluded that if the target eats a dish prepared from one of the recipes in SCP-241, that person soon dies from apparent anaphylactic shock. Others who eat the same dish are not similarly affected. Testing has been authorized to determine the exact nature of SCP-241's effects. SCP-241 appears to be impervious to getting dirty and to at least minor damage. For example, sauces splashed onto its pages disappear almost immediately, and torn pages and nicks on the cover are repaired within seconds. Research on SCP-241 continues, including potential interaction with other SCP items. Experiment Log 241-L02 Supplemental Testing on SCP-241 Just as in initial testing, all tests on SCP-241 were carried out in test kitchens at Site-19, using D-Class personnel for test subjects, unless otherwise indicated. Test 24121 Subject Subject 241-J was chosen from general population. Health screenings indicate subject is allergic to peanuts. Procedure Subject was instructed to close and open SCP-241 several times at prescribed intervals. Each time SCP-241 was opened, the complete contents of SCP-241 were recorded and transcribed while subject underwent testing. Results Test results indicated the subject's allergy to peanuts worsened each time subject opened SCP-241. Subject's allergy was most affected the first time he opened SCP-241, and subsequently opening SCP-241 appears to have diminishing effects. 
However, subject's allergy worsened from mild to severe. Most of the recipes in SCP-241 reappeared when subject closed and reopened SCP-241. Between 11 and 17 inclusive new recipes appeared each time SCP-241 was reopened. Recipes that had been replaced did not reappear. Only one exotic recipe was replaced after subject had opened SCP-241 for the fourth time. Analysis The effects of SCP-241 appear to follow the law of diminishing returns. SCP-241 also appears to tailor its choice of recipes to the specific condition of the target, though much more testing would be necessary to prove that theory. Suggest analysis of recipes offered during normal testing of SCP-241. Test 24122 Subject Subject 241K is a rhesus monkey. Health screenings indicated no apparent food allergies or other health problems. Procedure Subject was introduced to SCP-241 and encouraged to open it by handlers. Handlers were instructed to keep subject from closing SCP-241 again. Results Subject eventually opened SCP-241, and handlers kept it open for analysis. The contents of SCP-241 were consistent with previous results for a target with a shellfish allergy, though again unique for the target. Testing confirmed subject had developed an allergy to shellfish. A dish was prepared from SCP-241 by Subject 241-F and presented to Subject 241-K. Subject 241-K ate the meal without hesitation and nine minutes later was dead from anaphylactic shock, consistent with previous testing. Analysis SCP-241 is just as effective on certain non-humans as it is on humans. The working theory now is that SCP-241 works on anything potentially susceptible to food allergies that can and does open SCP-241. Test 24123 Subject Subject 241-L is a robot designed for remote manipulation of hazardous materials. Procedure Subject was remote controlled by who was instructed to have the subject open SCP-241. Results Subject opened SCP-241 via remote control. The contents of SCP-241 were identical to before it was closed previously. Analysis SCP-241 apparently does not respond to inorganic targets. Test 24124 Subject Subject 241M-859E was chosen from general population. Health screenings indicated no allergies. Procedure Subject was exposed to SCP-859 via touch. Subject then placed within an MOPP-4 containment suit. Subject was given SCP-241 and instructed to open it and to keep it open. Results Tests on skin sample taken from subject confirmed development of severe allergy to spider venom, as per usual with contact with SCP-859. SCP-241 retained its previous set of recipes. Analysis SCP-241 apparently requires physical contact with subject. Test 24125 Subject Subject 241M-859E Procedure Subject given a standard Class D uniform. Subject was given SCP-241 and instructed to open it. Results Subject dropped SCP-241 to the floor and began screaming. Subject given a mild sedative. SCP-241 contained a set of arachnid-based and themed recipes. The meal, Mr. Skeleton's Halloween Spider Snacks, was selected and prepared from SCP-241 by Subject 241-F. Due to Subject 241-M-859-E having severe arachnophobia, data expunged. Within two minutes, the subject experienced breathing difficulties and partial paralysis. This was closely followed by the typical symptoms of anaphylaxis. Immediate administration of epinephrine did not prevent the subject from expiring. Analysis Although the images found in SCP-241 are typically considered pleasing or appetizing, it does not seem to have any particular sentience. Autopsy confirmed the presence of venom and neurotoxins produced by the Brazilian wandering spider. End experiment log.
Directive 241-S06 In light of recent test results with SCP-241, no further testing of SCP-241 on personnel without pre-existing food allergies is authorized, without Level 4 security clearance. Testing may continue on personnel with pre-existing food allergies. 05 Directive 241-S09 Reclassification of SCP-241 to Euclid class is denied. Honestly, the cookbook? Leave it in its room and everything's fine. It's no one else's fault if you don't know what you're allergic to and don't bother to find out beforehand. Unless you're cooking for your significant other, then you'd better know. 05 Directive 241-S11 Cross-testing SCP-241 with other SCPs will be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. Exposure to SCP-682 has already been considered and denied. 05 Addendum 1 Acquisition Summary The Foundation became aware of SCP-241 in April 2000 while investigating reports of a Black Widow in said subject had been married four times and all four of her husbands had died shortly after eating a meal at home. However, since authorities never found evidence of foul play, subject was never charged with any crime. Subsequent interviews with subject by Foundation personnel revealed the existence of SCP-241, at which time SCP-241 was seized by Foundation agents. Subject revealed that she had first realized there was something unusual with SCP-241 when data expunged. Addendum 2 Initial Testing Log All tests on SCP-241 were carried out in test kitchens at Site-19, using D-Class personnel for test subjects, unless otherwise noted. Test 241-1 Subject Subject 241-A was chosen from general population. No unusual traits selected for. Procedure Subject 241A was presented SCP-241 wall closed and instructed to open it, choose a recipe, prepare it, and eat it while giving feedback during the entire process. Results Before exposure to SCP-241, Subject declared that he had never cooked anything more complicated than ramen noodles. Subject opened SCP-241, reporting nothing unusual. Subject looked through recipes in SCP-241 choosing sautéed scallops in a white wine sauce. Subject prepared the sautéed scallops from the recipe in SCP-241 and when complete, remarked that he did not know he could do that. Subject declared that the prepared dish smelled fantastic and while eating it, declared, This is the best thing I've ever eaten. Three minutes after completing the meal, subject started showing symptoms of anaphylactic shock. Subject was treated with emergency doses of epinephrine but treatment was not effective. Subject died from anaphylactic shock six minutes afterward, later confirmed by autopsy. A subsequent examination of SCP-241 revealed that 81 of its recipes called for shellfish. SCP-241 was left open. Analysis Results are consistent with previous descriptions of the effects of SCP-241. Test 241-2 Subject Subject 241B was chosen from general population. Subject reports no known allergies to scallops or other shellfish. Procedure SCP-241 was still open from test 241-1. Subject 241B was instructed to not close SCP-241, find the sautéed scallops recipe, prepare it, and eat it, while giving feedback during the entire process. Results before exposure to SCP-241, Subject expressed doubt that he'd be able to prepare the sautéed scallops recipe. After preparing the dish, Subject expressed surprise that he had done so, similarly to the reaction of Subject 241-A, and said that the dish smells pretty good. While eating, Subject declared that the dish was pretty good, and again expressed surprise that he had cooked it. Subject did not suffer anaphylactic shock or any other adverse effect after completing the meal. Post-testing observation of subject revealed no long-term effects from eating the dish. SCP-241 was left open. Analysis Results are consistent with previous descriptions of the effects of SCP-241. 
suspect that SCP-241 may somehow improve the cooking skill of whoever is preparing the dish. Test 241-3 Subject Subjects 241-C and 241-D were chosen from general population. Both subjects report no skill in cooking and no allergies to shellfish. Procedure SCP-241 was still open from test 2412. Subject 241-C was instructed to not close SCP-241, find the sautéed scallops recipe, and transcribe it to a standard sheet of paper. In a separate test kitchen, Subject 241-D was given the transcribed recipe and instructed to prepare and eat the dish prepared. Results Subject 241-C found and transcribed the recipe without incident. The transcribed recipe was visually compared to the recipe in SCP-241 and confirmed to be identical. SCP-241 was left open. Subject displayed no adverse effects from interaction with SCP-241. Subject 241-D was given the transcribed recipe and attempted to prepare the sautéed scallops, but experienced difficulty and frustration, several times declaring, I told you guys I can't cook. The completed dish did not look or smell nearly as good as in previous tests. Subject balked at eating the dish, saying that it smells like but was persuaded to eat it. Subject ate approximately 40% of the meal before stating, I'm gonna be sick, at which time subject vomited. Subject was instructed to finish the meal, but subject responded, data expunged. Termination of subject considered, but rejected in favor of further testing. Analysis More evidence that SCP-241 can improve the cooking skill of its user. Subject 241-D retained for further testing. Test 241-4 Subject Subject 241-D Procedure SCP-241 was still open from Test 241-3. Subject 241-D was instructed to not close SCP-241 find the sautéed scallops recipe, prepare it, and eat it, while giving feedback during the entire process. Results Subject vociferously protested to having to eat her own cooking, but was persuaded to cooperate, with the promise that subject would not have to eat the resultant dish if it turned out like in the previous test. Subject expressed skepticism, but proceeded to prepare the sautéed scallops recipe. While cooking the dish, Subject experienced none of the difficulties she experienced from the previous test, instead expressing the now familiar surprise that her cooking was turning out so well. The completed dish looked and smelled similar to the results of test 241-2. The subject was not nearly as reluctant to eat the prepared dish, declaring it not bad. Not bad at all. Subject did not appear to suffer from any adverse effects after eating the dish. During post-testing interviews, Subject was asked how she was able to prepare the sautéed scallops during this test, when the results of the previous test were so unappetizing. Subject stated that she did not know, only that once she started cooking the dish, it became perfectly clear to her how to do it. Subject did not appear to have any additional knowledge of cooking, and even had trouble remembering the cooking techniques she used in this test. Analysis there is now little doubt that SCP-241 can turn people who know nothing about cooking into gourmet chefs, at least for the dish that's being prepared. Test 241-11 Subject Subjects 241-E and 241-F were chosen from general population. Subject 241-E is known to have an allergy to peanuts. Subject 241-F has demonstrated considerable skill as a chef. Procedure Subject 241-E was presented with SCP-241 while closed and instructed to open it and choose a recipe. Subject 241-F was then instructed to prepare the selected meal from SCP-241. The prepared dish was given to Subject 241-E, who was then asked to eat it. Results Subject 241-E opened SCP-241 and, while looking through the recipes offered, stated that all the recipes called for peanuts, adding, peanuts mess me up something fierce. Subject found a few recipes that did not include peanuts, and selected an Australian carrot cake. Subject 241F prepared the carrot cake from SCP-241, and remarked that the finished product was better than he expected. 
The cake was presented to Subject 241E, who started eating without prompting or hesitation. Subject stated that the cake was the best thing I've ever eaten and ate nearly half the cake before claiming satiation. Within two minutes, Subject started showing symptoms of anaphylactic shock. Subject was administered epinephrine, which was ineffective, and died four minutes later. Autopsy confirmed anaphylactic shock as the cause of death. The recipes in SCP-241 were examined, and 85 of the 99 recipes called for peanuts or peanut products, but the Australian carrot cake was not one of them. The carrot cake and seven other recipes included lupin flour. A quick search found that lupin flour can induce an anaphylactic reaction in those who suffer from peanut allergies. The remaining six recipes called for more… exotic ingredients. SCP-241 remained open. The remaining half of the cake was saved for further testing. Analysis Reactions of subjects 241E and 241F were both consistent with prior observations. The selection of recipes supports the theory that SCP-241 somehow determines the substance that the target is most allergic to and offers recipes to specifically induce a fatal allergic reaction in the target. Test 241-12 Subject Subject 241F Procedure Subject 241F was instructed to prepare the six dishes that contain neither peanuts nor lupin flour. The dishes were turned over for analysis. The six recipes were transcribed. Results Data expunged Analysis Data expunged Subject 241F showed no apparent ill effects from preparing seven different dishes from SCP-241 in quick succession. Recommended retaining subject to study long-term effects of secondary, i.e. not as the target, exposure to SCP-241. Test 241-13 Subject Subject 241G was chosen from general population and is known to have an allergy to peanuts. Procedure Subject was instructed to eat the remaining cake from Test 241-11. Results Subject asked if the cake contained peanuts, and was assured that it did not. Subject stated that he didn't much like carrot cake. Subject started eating the cake, remarking that the cake was pretty good actually. Subject consumed approximately 75% of the remaining cake before declaring satiation. After seven minutes, subject started showing signs of anaphylactic shock. Epinephrine was administered, and subject was stabilized. Subject eventually recovered, although recovery time was somewhat longer than expected. Analysis It appears that, although the recipes from SCP-241 are potentially hazardous to anyone susceptible to the allergen in question, SCP-241's recipes are most potent against the target. Test 241-14 Subject Subject 241H was chosen from general population. According to complete health screenings, subject has no food allergies. Procedure Subject was instructed to open SCP-241 and leave it open for analysis. Results Analysis of SCP-241 showed that 79 of the recipes on its pages called for chicken eggs or egg-based products. 15 of the remaining recipes called for eggs. The other five recipes data expunged. These five recipes were transcribed. Subject 241H stated that she had never experienced any problems eating eggs before. Subject was presented with one dozen hard-boiled chicken eggs and was instructed to eat them. Subject asked for salt and pepper, granted, and proceeded to eat the eggs. While eating the third egg, subject started complaining of stomach pain. Subject was instructed to continue eating and she begrudgingly continued. Upon ingesting her seventh egg, subject collapsed on the floor, doubled over in pain. Within 60 seconds, subject started showing signs of anaphylactic shock. Epinephrine was administered, and subject was stabilized. Subject recovered, within the expected recovery time for such an episode. Analysis we now have evidence that SCP-241 somehow induces or amplifies an allergy in the target when SCP-241 is opened. This ability would explain how SCP-241 is able to cause an allergic reaction in targets without pre-existing food allergies. 
Addendum 3 Notes from Cross Testing To determine the effects of SCP-241's recipes on subjects that either cannot eat or do not require sustenance, approval was given to cross test SCP-241 on SCP-1770. Upon subject opening the book, the contents were identical to before it was closed previously. This confirms results of Test 241-23, in which SCP-241 does not respond to inorganic subjects. Item Number SCP-261 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures any access to SCP-261 must be approved by staff with Level 2 security clearance or higher. Any and all items dispensed by SCP-261 must be recorded, along with the amount of money entered and the amount of time elapsed between uses. Currently, SCP-261 may be used only 10 times in a 24-hour period, with no transaction exceeding the equivalent of 500 Japanese Yen. Testing approved by Site Command is not under these restrictions. Items dispensed by SCP-261 should be reviewed by Site Health and Safety officials before consumption. Failure to do so releases the Foundation from any obligation regarding negative effects. Items deemed dangerous or useful to research will be confiscated by Site Security, with financial compensation provided in proportion to money spent. Description. SCP-261 appears to be a large black vending machine with no front glass panel and a small keypad on the right side. SCP-261 was recovered in Yokohama, Japan. SCP-261 was brought to the Foundation's attention after investigation of an urban legend about a magic vending machine that was circulating on the internet. SCP-261 was found in a back alley behind a large shopping center with a handwritten sign saying out of order in Japanese taped to it. SCP-261 has no marks or identification of any kind, and no locals remember when or how it came to be in its current location. Internally, SCP-261 appears to be a basic vending machine equipped to vend food and beverage items. After a key was made and the front door opened, no abnormal materials were found and it was determined that SCP-261 has never actually contained any food or beverage items. The keypad, while connected and operating correctly, does not activate any of the dispensing mechanisms. When money is placed into SCP-261 and a three-digit number is entered on the keypad, SCP-261 will vend a random item. SCP-261 has not accepted any currency other than yen, with rejected currency being deposited in the coin return slot. It is unknown how these items appear, however, SCP-261 will not operate when the door is open or when recording devices are placed inside. The number entered on the keypad has no effect on the item vended, nor has any pattern been detected. Items are always some form of snack food and typically have bright, attention-grabbing packaging. SCP-261 is capable of operating with no external power supply but operation in this state will cause unstable vending to occur much more quickly than normal. If SCP-261 is used several times in a short period of time, and or large amounts of money are entered before an item is vended, SCP-261 will start to dispense bizarre items. While still food, their suitability for human consumption is often non-existent. Log of items vended during testing phase 8. 800 yen entered for each item, items being dispensed every two minutes. SCP-261 is attached to power. Coke Zero A can of Diet Coke, packaging in English. Cheetos A small bag of Cheetos snack food, packaging in English. Black Black A single pack of caffeinated chewing gum, packaging in Japanese. Yan Yan A single Yan Yan cone with peach dipping frosting, packaging in Japanese. The Meiji Seika Company does not produce this flavor. Pepsi, Dragon Twist. A can of Pepsi Cola with a trace of fruit flavor, packaging in English. Flavor identified as Dragon Fruit. PepsiCo does not produce this product. Dark Side Cola. A can with clear plastic sides, packaging in Japanese. Liquid inside is clear. When opened, liquid appears to react to the air, 
and changes to dark black over a period of several seconds. The black coloration looks like billowing smoke and cannot be reversed. Liquid's taste described as cola with something spicy in it. The little bakery, seven grain, a small tube the size of a candy bar with a green button made of aluminum, packaging in English. When the top is twisted off, a mass of dough is extruded. Dough contains several enzymes and bacteria that have not yet been identified. On contact with air, these cause the dough to rise and bake, killing the microbes in the process. Produces a small round loaf of bread weighing 250 grams. Taste described as good, but chewy. Lemon clams. Thick plastic baggie with a plastic tube on the side, containing water and 12 clams, packaging in Dutch. Following on package instructions, the plastic tube was cracked like a glow stick. Liquid in the bag flashed to steam, venting from a hole that popped open in the top of the bag, slightly burning one researcher. Steaming finished after 38 seconds, after which clams were found to be fully cooked and infused with a mild lemon flavor. On investigation, clams match no recorded species. Diet Ghost A can containing an instance of SCP-2107. Packaging was in English. Testing done on this instance provided similar results to other contained instances of SCP-2107. This marks the first time SCP-261 has vended another SCP object. Unknown. Small mesh bag filled with small multicolored pyramids, packaging in an unknown language. Pyramids found to be very hard and unpleasant tasting, compared to chalk in taste and consistency. When placed in hot water, pyramids open and produce strings that quickly dissolve, coloring the water the same shade as the pyramid. Water had no additional taste, but testing revealed a sharp increase in mineral, carbohydrate, and protein content, with several minerals unidentified at the present time. This content was found to be consistent with the recommended daily intake of nutrients for adult humans. Researcher ingesting the water reported stomach cramps two hours later, but no other effects. Unknown. Aluminum box with a small glass window on the side and a large round button on the top, packaging in an unknown language. Box is seamless and appears to be filled with small round animals covered in fur, each with three small paws and a single large eye. Pressing the button causes the inside of the box to rapidly become superheated, cooking the small animals alive. Muffled noises and scratching were heard for several seconds during the cooking process. After one minute, 30 seconds, the front panel opens and gives access to the now cooked animals. Professor Kane volunteered to eat the animals, with no other researchers willing to do so. Taste described as crunchy and very spicy, with a small hint of beef. Unknown. Tall, thin aluminum can, packaging in an unknown language. Opening the can caused a chemical reaction with the liquid inside the can. Liquid was apparently not intended for an oxygenated atmosphere and detonated violently, causing several injuries and killing two researchers. Testing discontinued and area cleared. Testing area observed to smell like citrus for several days. Item number SCP-294 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures there are no standard special containment procedures on file for item SCP-294. However, only personnel of security clearance level 2 or higher are allowed to interact with it. SCP-294 is currently being stored in the second floor personnel break room and is monitored by two guards of security clearance level 3 at all times. Description Item SCP-294 appears to be a standard coffee vending machine. The only noticeable difference being an entry touchpad with buttons corresponding to an English QWERTY keyboard. Upon depositing 50 cents US currency into the coin slot, the user is prompted to enter the name of any liquid using the touchpad. Upon doing so, a standard 12-ounce paper drinking cup is placed, and the liquid indicated is poured. 97 initial test runs were performed, including requests for water, coffee, beer, and soda. 
non-consumable liquids such as sulfuric acid, wiper fluid, and motor oil, as well as substances that do not usually exist in liquid state, such as nitrogen, iron, and glass, and each one returned a success. Test runs with solid materials such as diamond have failed, however, as it appears that SCP-294 can only deliver substances that can exist in liquid state. It is of note that after approximately 50 uses, the machine would not respond to further requests. After a period of approximately 90 minutes, the machine seemed to have restocked itself. It is also interesting to note that many caustic liquids that would have eaten through a normal paper cup seem to have no effect on the cups dispensed by the machine. Testing is ongoing. As suggested, SCP-294 was moved to the second floor personnel break room as a money-saving venture. Following Incident 2941, guards were stationed at the item, and a security clearance became necessary to interact with it. Document SCP-294-A Regarding Incident 2941 On August 21st, 2005, Agent Joseph attempted to use item SCP-294 to obtain coffee during his allotted break time at 9.30 a.m. At the request of Agent to see what it would do, requested a cup of joe from the item. Moments after confirming the selection, Agent Joseph began to sweat profusely and complained of dizziness before collapsing. After moving the unconscious agent to the infirmary, the medical team recovered the contents of the cup dispensed by item SCP-294. A combination of blood, tissue, and other bodily fluids. Testing revealed the DNA sequence of the biological material dispensed by SCP-294. Matched that of Agent Said agent made a complete recovery after four weeks of rest and intravenous hydration. X-rays and CAT scans showed no further signs of injury, and was released. Both agents were reprimanded. Additional security measures for SCP-294 have been recommended. Addendum SCP-294-F After reviewing documentation on SCP-294, suggested testing SCP-294's ability to retrieve specific liquids from a distance. Addendum SCP-294-H With the overseeing of O5 data expunged, a cup of SCP-75's secretion was used as input. The product was proven to be the requested liquid, and the cup was able to successfully contain the material. However, the report for Incident 075-7 was acknowledged two hours after the test. A containment procedure breach had occurred exactly the same time this test was taking place, waking SCP-75 to its active stage. It was able to secrete an amount of basic solution equal to the capacity of a coffee cup before emergency containment procedure was applied and it was rendered passive. The liquid was not found in the post-incident investigation. Addendum SCP-294-I Researcher punched in request for cup of gold. The machine dispensed a cup of molten gold. Researcher requested similar precious materials with the same result. Addendum SCP-294-J Researcher punched in, from a safe range, request for, quote, cup of anti-water. The machine hummed briefly, then displayed, out of range, on entry pad. It is theorized that SCP-294 has a limited range of collection and cannot reach into alternate universes or dimensions. Addendum SCP-294-K Researcher punched in request for Diamond. SCP-294 briefly hummed, then displayed out of range on entry pad. SCP-294 gives this result for all solid substances. As Diamond is a solid crystalline form of carbon, it appears the machine will not dispense liquid carbon, as this does not result in a Diamond. When Cup of Carbon was subsequently punched in, the machine dispensed a cup of liquid carbon SCP-294 was immune to the damaging effects of the dispensed liquid. Addendum SCP-294-M Testing for range of SCP-294's capacity for retrieval has been initiated. A unique compound has been formulated, composed of undisclosed ratios of bleach, cola, METRX powder, and garam masala. 
The fluid was created and placed in a sealed container, 25 meters away from SCP-294. When requested, the fluid was dispensed. An equal amount of the mixture was no longer present in its original container. Addendum SCP-2940-1 Researcher Under observation of Level 4 personnel, keyed in a request of the best drink I've ever had. SCP-294 dispensed a fluid similar in appearance to cola. The researcher identified it as a mixed drink he recalls having at a bar during his bachelor party and was convinced it was the best drink. Did not know what ingredients were in the drink besides rum and cola. Further tests are scheduled to ascertain how SCP-294 gathers information. Addendum SCP-2940-1A under the same conditions, Agent The best drink I've ever had. SCP-294 delivered a dark fluid topped with white foam, which was later identified as Vienna Lager. The cup was printed with a color picture of five men and two women drinking beer on the beach. Was one of them. In his briefing, Agent confirmed that his favorite drink ever was a Vienna Lager. He consumed at the beach with his friends. It has now been confirmed that SCP-294 has the ability to directly gather information from someone's mind in order to comply with the given conditions. Addendum SCP-294-Q1 Subject keyed the perfect drink. The machine dispensed a cup containing an odorless lavender liquid. After drinking the liquid, subject appeared to go into shock. Subject later committed suicide, leaving a note which read, I'm sorry, but at this point everything's just one big letdown. Requesting such a drink again is highly discouraged. None of the components of the drink have yet been identified. Addendum SCP-294-T1 Subject keyed in, something Cassie will like. The device was heard to hum for about three seconds before dispensing an empty cup. Printed on the side of the cup was an image of a traditional soda fountain glass, filled with something brown and topped with whipped cream. Upon introduction to SCP-85, it was identified by her as a chocolate banana milkshake and judged delicious. Addendum SCP-294-W Researcher keyed in request for a cup of music. SCP-294 produced a clear, sparkling fluid that tasted vaguely alcoholic. Following ingestion, subject reported feeling and not hearing a continuous rhythm, and demonstrated the ability to move and even dance with a certain fluidity that he had not previously shown. Testing on other abstract concepts is continuing. Addendum SCP-294-AB During a mass security breach, Agent requested a cup of pertinent medical knowledge while taking shelter inside the second floor break room. Of the four agents in the room, Agent was the only one who was not injured. SCP-294 poured a cup of clear green liquid. Following the ingestion of this substance, Agent began mending the other agent's wounds in a manner consistent with Foundation medical training. Agent no longer has the medical training that the liquid provided, and other attempts to recreate the effect have failed. The agent has speculated that this event was an emergency measure taken by the object to ensure self-preservation. Addendum SCP-294-AC Dr. requested My Life Story from SCP-294. SCP-294 made humming noises and shook violently for approximately three minutes before providing a highly viscous, opaque black liquid. Upon consumption, said doctor reported that he remembered everything that had ever happened to him. Following this test, Dr. entered his office and returned 48 hours later with a 538-page autobiography. Addendum SCP-294-AD Researcher produced request consisting solely of the phrase Surprise me. Device produced an opaque cup containing normal water, later determined to have been heated to approximately 200 degrees Celsius. Upon receiving vibration from transport, the contents of the cup turned into steam, violently spraying boiling water in a two-meter radius. Addendum SCP-294-AF Researcher produced request for Blood of Christ. SCP-294 vibrated and produced the message, Hic est enim calix sanguinis me, then produced a paper drinking cup 
containing approximately 0.12 liters of red grape wine. Addendum SCP-294-AG Researcher produced requests for Cup of Smilodon Blood Cup of Passenger Pigeon Blood and Cup of Thomas Jefferson's Blood and received three out-of-range errors. Addendum SCP-294-AH a D-Class personnel with IQ of 99 and low curiosity scores was given written instructions about what to request. The D-Class personnel produced a request for blood of Canis lupus and received a cup of liquid subsequently identified as wolf blood. The D-Class personnel next produced a request for saliva of Echospherus cabalis and received a cup of liquid subsequently identified as horse saliva. The D-Class personnel next produced a request for urine of Fascolarctos cinereus and received a cup of liquid subsequently identified as koala urine. The D-Class personnel next produced a request for cerebrospinal fluid of Phoboromus patersoni and received a cup of liquid currently undergoing analysis. It is to be noted that Phoboromus patersoni went extinct during the late Miocene epoch approximately 8 million years ago. Addendum SCP-294-AI Dr. King produced request for a cup of room temperature superconductor and received a cup of apple juice with seeds floating in it. Addendum SCP-294-AI Dr. Menchu produced request for cup of D-151839's leukemia and received a cup of fluid. The cup of fluid was microscopically examined and found to contain leukemic blast cells which were a genetic match to D-151839. A second request for cup of D-151839's leukemia resulted in an out-of-range error. D-151839 was subsequently found to be free of leukemia. However, within 15 days, the leukemia had recurred. Other SCP-294 experiments are currently awaiting approval. Item Number SCP-330 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures Considering recent incidents, SCP-330 is to be kept in secure storage until further notice. Level 2 clearance is required for access to SCP-330 or its contents. All direct experimentation of SCP-330 is to be conducted using Class D personnel with no genetic history of diabetes. No more than two samples are to be removed from SCP-330 at any time, except during exposure testing. Description: SCP-330 appears to be a small round stainless steel bowl, filled with a variable amount of individually wrapped pieces of candy. Taped to the side of the bowl is a handwritten note, reading, Take no more than two, please. Attempts to remove the note have met with failure, as have attempts to hide or obscure it. Testers have noted finding it impossible to avoid reading the note, and those who approach it from an opposite angle are aware of this request. When a quantity of candy greater than two pieces is removed, regardless of the means involved, the offender instantly has both hands severed at the wrists by an unknown method. Tests involving remote manipulation by Class D personnel resulted in the operator's hands being removed, despite no direct contact. Inspection of the incision reveals that the cut is made at a molecular level, leaving no tool marks or identifying factors. It is to be noted that the third piece must be removed within a certain time frame. After 24 hours, the count resets, and additional candy can be removed. Discovered three days after Halloween of 2000, when a police investigation into what was believed to be a case of ritualistic dismemberment was launched. SCP-330 was seized as evidence, but all attending officers were killed after Officer had emptied the bowl of its contents. The cause of death was a result of data expunged. Foundation agents, under the guise of federal agents, recovered the object with acceptable casualties. Addendum Due to continuing security issues, SCP-330 will be held in Dr. Kondraki's office when not required for testing. Experiment Name Researcher Vogt Date Undisclosed Subject D-33001 
a double amputee equipped with prosthetic forearms and hands, was told to remove three pieces of candy from the bowl. Subject complied, with no immediate effects. However, within 45 seconds, subject reported a burning itch from both his arm stumps, right arm, 2 centimeters below elbow, left arm, 1.5 centimeters below elbow, and phantom pains from both his absent wrists. Subject's distress at this discomfort increased rapidly. Within 180 seconds of having removed the third candy from the bowl, the subject began forcibly removing both his own prostheses. Upon hurling the prostheses to the ground, subject reported that the discomfort had ceased. Dermatological examination of subject's stumps revealed no unusual irritation or inflammation. Mechanical examination of subject's prostheses revealed that, in addition to the physical damage sustained by being hurled to the ground, the prostheses had data expunged. Subject was supplied with fresh prostheses, identical to the first pair, but reported feeling that it was wrong to put them on. Coercion was applied, and Subject reluctantly put on left prosthesis. Note, Subject is right-handed. However, when told to put on right prosthesis, Subject began weeping incoherently and flailing his arms until the left prosthesis detached itself. Analysis of video footage revealed that Subject had not properly attached the left prosthesis to his stump. Mechanical examination of left prosthesis revealed only physical damage sustained from being thrown across the room. 24 hours later, Subject was given fresh prostheses and reported no difficulty in putting them on. Subject not terminated, as D-class amputees who are already used to their prostheses are in short supply. Item Number SCP-348 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-348 is to be kept in a standard locker at Site-19. Personnel wishing to conduct tests involving SCP-348 are to obtain Level 3 or higher authorization and present a detailed list of intended test subjects. Description SCP-348 is a white ceramic bowl patterned with light blue flowers, measuring approximately 20 centimeters in diameter and 9 centimeters high. While no maker's marks are present, the Chinese characters for Thinking of You are etched into the side of the bowl. When in the presence of an individual afflicted with a minor ailment or injury, i.e. mild cough, runny nose, or scrapes, SCP-348 will fill with soup. While the ingredients present within the soups produced by SCP-348 vary, young subjects, individuals between the ages of 4 and 18, have consistently stated that they enjoyed the meal, sometimes stating that it reminds them of their parents' cooking. Subjects will finish the soup found in SCP-348 if allowed. Children who eat from SCP-348 several times often express a feeling of contentment, stating that though they are eating by themselves, they do not feel lonely. Addendum SCP-3481 SCP-348 was acquired shortly after rumors of a child living in apparently possessing remarkable recovery abilities came to the Foundation's attention. Investigation revealed that the child in question originally discovered SCP-348 in the attic of their house and had come to rely on it after receiving insufficient attention from their parents. The child's parents, both full-time workers, refused to comment on their relationship with the child. Resulting testing involving children was carried out under the guise of surveys to gauge the success of new food items offered at public schools. Addendum SCP-3482 It has been noted that, occasionally, after soup produced by SCP-348 has been consumed, a message will materialize on the inside of the bowl. Words produced on the inside of the bowl appear to be printed on the ceramic consistent with existing markings. The message that appears will be in the language most familiar to the drinker of the soup. After several hours, or when SCP-348 produces another meal, the words disappear. Testing Log SCP-348-1323 Subject 8-year-old female, afflicted with sore throat. Brief Background lives with and is on good terms with both parents. Notes Subject took approximately 30 minutes to consume soup, remarked later that sore throat seemed to have gone away. Subject 
10-year-old male, recently injured self while biking, minor bruising. Brief background, lives with both parents, often argues with both. Notes, message appeared, don't forget to brush. Subject, 11-year-old male, afflicted with slight cold. Brief background, lives with foster parents. Notes, message appeared, I'm glad you're happy. Subject, 9-year-old female, afflicted with slight cold. Brief background, lives with both parents, said to be prone to tantrums. Notes, nothing of note occurred during or immediately after testing. Subject stated while she didn't particularly care for the soup after tasting it, she still wanted to eat it. Follow-up investigations revealed that the subject recovered from the cold faster than was expected. Subject, 6-year-old male, recently injured self while playing with friends. Minor scrapes and scratches. Brief background, parents divorced, currently lives with mother. Notes, message appeared, I'm sorry son. Subject, 7-year-old female, afflicted with cough. Brief background, lives with mother and grandmother, father deceased, traffic accident. Notes, message appeared, I love you. Addendum, SCP-3483. Testing has revealed that in the event that someone older than 18 years of age attempts to consume soup created by SCP-348, the individual will find that they are less inclined to finish the meal. Some such individuals will remark that something is missing. Most will simply state that the soup was nothing out of the ordinary. Further studies carried out with older subjects indicate that though messages will appear for individuals older than 18, the appearance of the messages is worn and faded. Testing Log SCP-3482635 Note: It was observed that though over 100 subjects were tested, only four individuals received messages from SCP-348. Subject: 30-year-old female, afflicted with headache. Brief background: On poor terms with both parents. Refused to accept father's offer for career training. Currently lives alone. Notes: Message appeared. Why? Subject: 35-year-old male, afflicted with cough. Brief background: Parents divorced, visits father and stepmother once a month, does not visit mother on her insistence. Notes: Message appeared. It'll get better. Subject: 40-year-old female, afflicted with sore throat. Brief background: Moved away and became estranged from both parents. Nevertheless, sent money and took care of senior housing for both. Father recently passed away. Notes. Subject noted the soup tasted initially bitter, but was fulfilling in the end. Message appeared. Thank you. Subject. 40-year-old male, afflicted with minor backaches. Brief background. Murdered father approximately one year ago. Notes. Subject tasted and then refused to consume soup, complaining about the taste. Subject later developed mild stomach pains. After the contents of SCP-348 were disposed of, SCP-348 immediately filled with what appeared to be salt water, which remained for three hours before disappearing. Subject, 45-year-old male, afflicted with aches due to arthritis. Brief background, happily married, lives with wife and children. Visits father once a week, with family. Mother deceased. Notes. Message appeared. I'm proud of you. Despite the extensive data gathered in testing, it is unknown whether the messages that SCP-348 has manifested originate from the fathers of the subjects, or SCP-348 itself. Addendum. SCP-3484. SCP-348 was once used in a test involving a 60-year-old man suffering from a terminal illness. The subject, a grandfather with multiple grandchildren, stated that the soup produced by SCP-348 was the best he'd ever tasted. Following the test, the subject reported feeling a sense of satisfaction and noted that the pain caused by the illness seemed to have faded. The subject passed away peacefully a week later. Item Number SCP-377 Object Class Safe 
Special Containment Procedures SCP-377 is kept in the personnel break room, third cabinet to the left of the refrigerator. Any personnel desiring a cookie from SCP-377 may take one, and only one cookie, every 48 hours, to ensure that all personnel get a share. Personnel read their fortunes at their own risk. Description SCP-377 is a box of LaChoy brand fortune cookies. The box was full when it was recovered from data expunged, and has since restocked itself regularly every 12 hours. The cookies within the box are individually wrapped, for freshness, according to the box, and are, according to all tests, totally ordinary. Each cookie contains one 18mm by 58mm piece of paper, on which a fortune is written in blue ink. All of these properties are consistent with a box of cookies from this brand. However, the fortunes contained within each cookie are not consistent with those provided by the standard product. Fortunes appear to be specific to the individual opening the cookie, and have thus far shown to be 100% accurate, ranging from vague indications of coming success to specific predictions regarding personnel's personal lives. The fortunes are not, however, always positive. It is unknown whether the fortune cookies actively predict future events, or in fact cause future events to occur. Document number 377-01 The following is a partial log of some of the more notable fortunes given out by SCP-377. Fortune text. It's a boy. Corresponding result. Subject's wife's water broke less than an hour later. The child was male. Fortune text. The weather is really just not your friend today. Corresponding result. Subject was struck by lightning later on the same day. Subject made a full recovery. Fortune text. Keep playing. You're going to win soon. Corresponding result. Subject was a regular player in the state lottery, buying two lottery tickets a week. Four weeks after receiving this fortune, subject won over 100 million US dollars. Fortune text. Life is laughter. Enjoy it while you can. Corresponding result. Subject suffered an aneurysm, leading to massive hemorrhaging and sudden death. This occurred while the subject was laughing. Fortune text. Duck. Corresponding result. Data expunged. Addendum. Following SCP-377's prediction of the deaths of several personnel, a request was submitted to upgrade SCP-377's class to Keter. These were denied, citing a lack of evidence that SCP-377 had any actual connection to the causes of the deaths. Addendum. Dr. received a fortune reading. You don't have long to live. Dr. was then startled by a guard who entered the break room and began to choke on the cookie. The guard did not know the Heimlich maneuver, and Dr. tragically suffocated and died. This has been regarded as an accident and coincidence. Note from Agent I strongly discourage the recreational use of SCP-377. Knowing the future sucks all the fun out of life. Believe me, I know. Item number SCP-509 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-509-A and SCP-509-B are both to be contained on site due to their immobility. Each is to be cordoned off, and any members of the public turned away. Outside of research and maintenance purposes, no humans or pigs, living or dead, are to be allowed into either structure. Personnel may safely enter and leave SCP-509-A and SCP-509-B within four minutes of activation, and while inactive. After testing, any living humans recovered from SCP-509-B are to be trained as Level 0 personnel and assigned to minimal security positions. Personnel are cautioned that smoke inhalation from SCP-509-A poses a health hazard and are advised to wear particulate respirators during and immediately after testing. Description SCP-509 is the collective term for two structures with similar and possibly linked anomalies. SCP-509-A is a wooden sauna located in Gaston, Oregon. When activated remotely, 
It functions as normal for an electric stove sauna, producing steam by dripping water onto a heated surface. Local records show that SCP-509-A was built in 1987 and exhibited no anomalous properties until shortly before its containment in 1995. When used by a human, SCP-509-A produces clouds of smoke instead of steam. Though the smoke is at this point non-anomalous, the means by which it is produced are unclear. After approximately six minutes of smoke production, SCP-509-A enters an active state, and tracking devices placed inside fail for the duration of its active period. Attempts to enter SCP-509-A no longer lead to its interior. After a period of 155 minutes, SCP-509-A returns to its inactive state, now filled with extremely thick smoke. All humans in SCP-509-A at activation are no longer present within the structure, but are replaced by an equal number of cured pig carcasses. These carcasses exhibit no anomalous properties. SCP-509-B is a brick smokehouse located near Hesden in northern France, exhibiting similar anomalous properties to SCP-509-A. SCP-509-B is believed to have been built circa 1750, though it too functioned normally until 1995. Whenever one or more cleaned but uncured pig carcasses are placed into SCP-509-B, it ceases to produce smoke and instead produces steam. Six minutes after the addition of the last pig carcass, the interior of SCP-509-B becomes inaccessible in a similar manner to SCP-509-A. After 12 minutes, SCP-509-B returns to its inactive state. Any pig carcasses present at time of activation are replaced by living humans. These humans speak fluent English and claim to have just been at a sauna. Physical examination reveals no anomalous properties and dehydration consistent with approximately 20 minutes in a sauna. Under questioning, these individuals demonstrate functional knowledge within standard parameters, but have no recollection of life before recovery from SCP-509-B. No records have been found of persons recovered in this way. Experiment Log 509 Experiment 5095 Date 9-21-1995 Head Researcher Dr. Samuel Chow Procedure D-35475 was instructed to enter SCP-509-A 15 minutes after activation. Subject reported that he was unable to open the door, and so was given tools to remove the door from its hinges. With assistance from research staff, D-35475 was able to remove the door. Instead of its interior, SCP-509-A contained an empty white room, substantially larger than the exterior of SCP-509-A. D-35475 was ordered to enter SCP-509-A. On doing so, he reported that it contained a large quantity of pigs. When questioned regarding the incongruity of this with external observations, D-35475 clarified that he did not in fact see, hear, smell, or feel any pigs, but rather was certain of their presence. Experiment 50917 Date 404-1996 Head Researcher Dr. Samuel Chow and Dr. Alexander Bejo. Procedure SCP-509-A and SCP-509-B were simultaneously activated. 30 minutes after activation, D-35475 and D-31161 were instructed to enter SCP-509-A and SCP-509-B respectively. As expected, both reported seeing the white chamber. However, D-35475 did not perceive it as containing pigs, and D-31161 did not perceive it as containing humans. Each reported seeing a distant blurred figure, which matched the movements of the other, though certain identification was impossible. Attempts for each to move towards the other figure proved similarly ineffective. Experiment 50936 Date 120 1999 Head Researcher Dr. Alexander Bejo Procedure 
D35574 entered SCP-509-A while active, but unusually did not perceive the presence of pigs. D35574 reported, and camera footage confirmed, a distant blurred figure, similar to those observed during concurrent testing of SCP-509-A and SCP-509-B. Despite the fact that no testing was scheduled for SCP-509-B that day, the planned testing was aborted. After recovery from SCP-509-A, a routine medical exam revealed D35574 to be infected with a virulent strain of dengue fever not matching any known variety. Experiment 509-43 Date 3-8-1999 Head Researcher Dr. Evan Green Procedure A live pig was placed into SCP-509-A, which was then activated. Rather than steam or smoke, SCP-509-A began to fill with aerosolized decontamination fluid. After six minutes, the interior became inaccessible for 40 minutes. On deactivation, the pig had been replaced by a deceased male human in a hazmat suit. The corpse exhibited severe burns across and through its entire body. The torso had been opened and emptied of all organs, save the liver and heart. No unusual occurrences were reported at SCP-509-B. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.